Hey, let me tell you a little bit about our special guest tonight, Dr. David Perlmutter. A board-certified neurologist and fellow of the American College of Nutrition received his MD degree from the University of Miami School of Medicine. He is the author of The Better Brain Book and Raise a Smarter Child by Kindergarten and is recognized internationally as a leader in the field of nutritional influences on neurological disorders. Tonight we're going to talk about the power of your brain and what you can do with it. Here's Dr. David Perlmutter. David, how are you? Well, I'm just fantastic. How are you? Good. Good to have you on. Great subject matter, by the way. And also, your work is just truly inspiring. i got to congratulate you on both of your books. Well, you're very kind. As a matter of fact, our newest book was just released Tuesday of last week. It's called Power Up Your Brain, The Neuroscience of Enlightenment. And pleased to say that it has become an Amazon bestseller in just one week's time. Super. Tell me about yourself beyond just the bio. Gee, where do I begin? Well, as mentioned, um, I've been involved in the neurosciences for, gee, as long as I can remember. I actually, uh, as I talked about in the new book, I actually began uh, helping my father in the operating room when I was 14 years old. He uh, practiced neurosurgery. And uh, now that the statute of limitations has run out on that, I'm <laughs> free to talk about it. And began doing a lot of research in brain anatomy when I was uh, in my late teens and had the opportunity to publish a number of research papers when I was 19 and 20 and began lecturing, even at that point, um, to the American College of Surgeons. And thereafter, of course, went to medical school and um, began uh, my work in neurology. But <clears throat> as, as fate would have it, um, when I finally got out of my neurology residency, I was a little bit maybe dismayed or disappointed perhaps in the limitations that being a typical mainstream neurologist really placed upon me in terms of the scope of things I was able to accomplish and really felt that, you know, the idea of preventive medicine needed to come to the field of neurology and, you know, even to this day people don't really talk about things like, for example, preventing Alzheimer's and preventing right. other neurologic conditions. So. I've kind of cut that niche a little bit for myself and recognized the profound importance, for example, of nutrition and various other lifestyle factors that I know we'll have an opportunity to talk about tonight. And it's really been a very wonderful and uh, rewarding experience for me over the years to finally uh, experience how the public has just really embraced this idea that they're kind of done with just taking medicines to treat their symptoms and really want to treat more than just the smoke but actually pay attention to the fire. So, you know, that really led to my exploration of, of nutritional influences, lifestyle influences in neurologic disease, and I've had the great opportunity to speak at some really wonderful venues around, mm -hmm. actually around the world and have had the opportunity to appear on programs like the Today Show and Oprah and, and talk about these things. And it's just so gratifying that people really embrace this and are really interested in this and are just not going to you know, be satisfied with the status quo of, well, you have an illness, take this pill, and hope for the best. Oh, it, it, it's fascinating. And let me, let me ask you this, because you are a neurologist, uh, about Representative Gabrielle Giffords. Uh, you know, when, when the brain takes a shot like she did, you know, a 9 millimeter round passing through her brain at 600 miles an hour, does the brain ever rewire itself? Can it heal itself? Absolutely. You know, a couple things to consider, first of all, is that when that bullet passed through her brain and luckily missed uh, any important blood vessels, it is completely sterile. It's not as if some... You know, you're introducing something that's dirty going through the brain. It's a totally sterile uh, uh, projectile because mm -hmm. it's going at such high velocity. And if, in fact, no major uh, vasculature is, is compromised, oftentimes, as, uh, as fate would have it, uh, patients do very well. I mean, um, the, in, the, the newer types of treatments involve what's uh, the craniectomy where we remove part of the skull and uh, allow, because we always anticipate that there's going to be prominent swelling. And really, what used to be accompanied by so much morbidity and even mortality was just the swelling, not the original injury. You know, the swelling of the brain, it has nowhere to go. So uh, unlike your leg that swells or some other body part, when the brain swells, it's enclosed in a solid box, uh -huh. having nowhere to go except down. And when there's swelling to compromise those structures that are at the base of the brain, the brain stem, then you have big problems. That's so, why they took off part of her skull, right? Exactly right. And typically what's done with that skull is it's implanted in the abdomen where it remains viable until such time as, it, it, as it's being re-implanted. So, you know, her situation was that um, 
fortunately, her bullet passed through an area, uh, the bullet that trans- uh, transpired uh, in her situation, really didn't compromise areas of, of uh, vital importance. You know, the lower structures in the brain, the brain stem, are really those ones that uh, can't be uh, traumatized in any way, shape, or form, or there'll be huge issues. So, um, you know, a very, very lucky woman indeed. I've got a friend who fell about a year and a half ago. He he had stenosis of the spinal cord, but he he fell. He hit his face uh, when he fell. He didn't stop his fall, and he he hasn't severed his spine, doctor. But he's paralyzed from the neck down. What the heck did he do? Well, you know, unfortunately, and to get back to a comment that you made earlier, George, and that is uh, the the ability of the brain to rewire itself. Yeah. And by the way, they call it cord syndrome in his case. Yeah, or brown Sequard syndrome. Okay. But um, the ability of the brain is uh, is far more advanced than the spinal cord. And, uh, you know, the, the brain actually can it clearly rewire itself, and that's a process that we call neuroplasticity. And actually, uh, two weeks ago, I did a nice Huffington Post about neuroplasticity, this wonderful ability that the human brain has to actually make new connections. Huffington Post, by the way, just announced they're getting bought out by AOL for $315 million. <laughs> well, I hope they Ma- keep Maybe the because writer. of your article. <laughs> <clears throat> well, that's certainly rewiring. Yeah. But nonetheless, the, the spinal cord, however, does not have that ability to any significant degree. So you know, injuries to the spinal cord don't typically repair themselves, but the human brain has this incredible potential to rewire itself around areas of damage and the real gist of our new book, Power Up Your Brain, is that we can enhance the brain's ability to actually, through this process of neuroplasticity, tap into those areas of the brain that really define us as human beings, those unique parts of the brain that give us access to perhaps more information than we're used to getting on a day-to-day basis. Okay, so in his particular case, will that brain ever communicate with a spinal cord? If the cord is transected, that will not happen. It's not. It's not. uh, Unless, well, or traumatized to the extent that those neurons have died back. Unless, and this is the big hope, someday, you know, there is some technique that allows those nerves to regenerate. And it's not just a question of those nerves regenerating. It's a question of those nerves rewiring and knowing where to go. Uh, in the brain, there is, you know, as I mentioned before, a profound ability to do that, to rewire itself uh, in face of demand or in face of volition. But the spinal cord, unfortunately, does not have that ability to any significant degree. All right. Now, tell me, what got you inspired to write Power Up Your Brain? Well, again, it's it's a time of transition for me. I mean, I think my first, perhaps, 25 years of practicing neurology allowed me to really push the boundaries to explore nutrition and explore lifestyle effects and, and, and indeed utilize the you know the benefits of modern medicine as well. We began using things like hyperbaric oxygen, doing chelation therapy, intravenous glutathione therapy, intravenous vitamins, and really have had the opportunity to realize some really beautiful outcomes compared to what I would have achieved had I just been pushing pills. But beyond that, most recently, this new book, Power Up Your Brain, The Neuroscience of Enlightenment, has really taken my explorations to a a new level, and that is, you know, understanding what we're trying to to be as humans means that we're trying to tap into that part of our lives uh, to to understand what it means to be a a spiritual being. And there's nothing specifically religious about that. But what we've come to understand is that there are parts of the brain, there are specific parts of the hardware of the human brain that allow the spiritual connection to happen. Just as there's a part to move your left hand and a, and a part to feel things that are uh, touching your right toe, there's a part of the brain that allows us to make a connection to that energy that's around us. But if you die and the brain goes with it, obviously, where's the connection then? <laughs> well, listen, you and I have been talking now for, what, 18 minutes? and <laughs> Look where we are. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I mean, that's, that's an unknown that I don't think, oh, you know, you and I are going to be able to solve tonight. I mean, I, I think certainly uh, plenty of religious doctrines feel that they have the answer to that. But to take a step back, we don't need to be dead to, to uh, experience the energy and the uh, information that surrounds each and every one of us. And, in fact, tapping into that information uh, is what enlightenment is all about. So, so basically the book was written. Because we now understand through advanced what's called functional MRI imaging as well as spec scanning, 
we understand which parts of the brain are necessary for that spiritual experience. And these are studies done at our most uh, prestigious universities. For example, the University of Pennsylvania, the work of a fellow named Andrew Newberg, a, a medical doctor who's written uh, several uh, books about what does happen to the brain during prayer and meditation. So the purpose of our new book, Power Up Your Brain, is to give you the tools to enhance neuroplasticity, the ability of the brain to rewire itself or to make better connections. What are those nutritional, what are those lifestyle changes that you can make that then allow you to gain better access to those parts of the brain that can basically make you a better person? But it can be done, right? Oh, it's, it's, it's leading edge science, and it's documented. Uh, you can see the, the brain scans before and after. And, you know, basically what we're able to do is through our specific nutritional choices, and, I, you know, hopefully we'll have plenty of time to talk oh, about sure. it. Oh, <laughs> sure. We can uh, modify or change the way the brain's DNA works. We can actually affect change in the brain's DNA, our code of life, to lead to the expression of certain genes that allow the creation of certain chemicals that stimulate neurons to grow and stimulate brain cells to connect to each other. And that's, that, to me, that's just, it takes your breath away. That we have the ability now to control our genes and our DNA. You know, back when I went to medical school, the, the, our DNA was talked about, but it was locked in a glass case and pretty much uh, was a one-way street, determined uh, who and what you would be and what illnesses you might have and what illnesses you might not have. But we now understand, you know, there's been this whole argument and, or debate over the years, are we a product of our nature, our DNA, or are we a product of our nurture, our environment? This whole uh, nature versus nurture debate has been going on for quite some time, but how incredible it is over the past 10 years that we've begun to understand the environment. This whole uh, nature versus nurture debate has been going on for quite some time, but how incredible it is over the past 10 years that we've begun to understand that there's this beautiful dance between nature and nurture, that our experiences, our life experiences, affect moment to moment our DNA's expression. The conversation that you and I are having at this moment, the fact that the various people around this wonderful country of ours are listening to this conversation is actually affecting their DNA expression. So it's, it's powerful information. And this is the level of medicine and neurology that motivated, as you asked, the, the writing of our new book, Power Up Your Brain. Why can some people use their brain power to do incredible things, whether it's intuition, thought process, other people can't? It's the same brain power. Well, not at all. Um, you know, the brain is a, a product of, as I mentioned, genes mm -hmm. and environment. And, you know, for a very, very highly efficient brain, you have to have treated it well and continue to treat it well. So you can't taint it. Oh, absolutely you can taint it. And, oh. you know, the, uh, the, the biggest issues that, that we really focus on, at least with respect to children, are nutritional issues. We know that we, we really want kids to have specific nutritional supplements, additives to their diet, and to protect their brains during, for example, sports. Uh, time and time again, I'm, you know, seeing children in my office who've had one or more blows to the head in some kind of contact sport, at times unprotected. Uh, 